In this chapter, I would like to give you a brief overview of the Rigify workflow that we'll be following in this course. The first step that I outlined is not really related to Rigify, it's just a general thing that we do when we rig any character, and that is to ensure that the character itself is properly set up. These are not absolute rules, they're just my personal guidelines that I use to make sure that my character is prepared for rigging. We'll explore these in the next chapter, so let's move on. Step two is the step that I really want to talk about in this chapter, and that is creating a so-called meta rig. A meta rig is a simplified version of your final rig. Meta rigs are constructed from standard Blender armatures. There's nothing really special about them, except that some of the bones in this uh, meta rig armature are tagged with a special property. And that property tells Rigify that this is one of its building blocks. So if I go to Blender and I just create a single bone, this single bone can be a meta rig, can become a meta rig that Rigify uh, can work with. I mentioned building blocks, and so let's explore what those are. A building block is just the word that I use. Officially inside Rigify, they're called rig types. Rigify offers four categories of rig types. There are limbs, spines, basic building blocks, and there are two other uh, presets that we will look at. Under limbs, there is an arm preset, which is basically a human arm. There is a palm preset. This preset helps create a very subtle but important deformation in, in the palm of the hand. There is a finger preset, and these three connect and work together. We'll see how that happens later on. There is a human leg preset. There is a preset called paw but really it is used to rig animal legs. And there is a tentacle preset, which obviously can be used to rig a tentacle, but it is a really useful preset that can be used in a variety of situations. Uh, we'll see how we can use it to rig the face of a character, and we'll even use it to simulate simple muscle deformations. Under spines, you have a basic spine, a head preset, with, which also includes the neck of the character, and also a tail preset. And head and tail often connect to the spine. We'll see how that works later on. There is a group called Basic. In there you have a single bone property. This is a really straightforward building block. Sometimes you want a single bone without any automations to carry over from your meta rig to your final rig. When you do, use this property and it's going to work. Similar to, to, to the single bone, there is a bone chain property. Sometimes you just want a chain of bones without any automations, then you would use this preset. Uh, the next two are called pivot and row copy. And even though they are under basic, they are very advanced. And we'll talk about them later in the course. There is a face building block. It is a very versatile face rig, uh, which can be used to rig a human face, but it can even be adapted to animal faces. The experimental chain preset is a chain of bendy bones, and since it is experimental, you should use it with caution. And then there are the pre-built meta rigs. When you activate Rigify, and we'll activate Rigify together in the next uh, chapter, here I'm just going to demonstrate, but when you activate Rigify and press Shift A, under Armature there will be a couple of additional uh, armatures that you can choose from. Uh, one is called Human Meta Rig, there are a couple of animal presets, and under Basic you have Basic Human and Basic Quadruped. Many people think that this is what Rigify is all about. But really, the metrics are nothing more than a predefined combinations of the building blocks that I just talked about. Here I have a special scene that I have prepared. 
in this scene I have created some of the pre-built metrics and if I go to pose mode I have color coded their rig types or building blocks using bone groups. So you can see that the human meta rig consists of two legs highlighted in blue. This red chain of bones is the spine preset. Then in yellow we have a head and neck preset. These bones here are an arm preset. Attached to the arm is a palm preset in green. These light blue bones are finger presets attached to the, to the palm preset. This pink structure here is the face preset that I just mentioned. The purple bones are single bones, so basic single bone. And these uh, single bones can be manipulated by the user in the final rig. The black bones down here in the pelvis area are also single bones, however, the user won't be able to manipulate those in the final rig. They are just here to help with uh, the weight painting of the character. Um, let's look at another one, let's say the bird. Again, in red we have a spine, basic spine. In yellow there is a head and neck preset. The dark red bones here are a tail preset. The purple ones are again single bones that can be manipulated by the user. And here they're used as feather bones. This green bone is used to manipulate the wing of, of the bird. But really it is a tentacle preset. And down here in the finger, so claws, we also have a tentacle preset in green. As I said, as I mentioned, the tentacle is very versatile and very useful preset. So yeah, my point is that there is nothing special, nothing magical about these pre-built metrics. They're just a combination of these building blocks. And when you understand how Rigify works, you will be able to build your own metrics out of these building blocks, or you can extend the existing metrics. Let's move on to the next point in this presentation, and that is how we generate metrics. As you probably already understand, there is a quick way to create metrics, and that is through this uh, menu that appears after you activate Rigify. I call this workflow the beginner workflow. Even though I call it beginner workflow, I'm not saying that it's bad. It is quick and efficient. You get good results because these meta rigs that you get from, from this menu are prepared by real professionals and they're going to just work. You get some really nice automations with this workflow and the only problem with it is that it's slightly limited. You are limited to a human a bird, a cat, wolf, horse and shark. And sure, you can use the wolf to rig a dog or the shark to maybe rig some sort of fish. But as soon as you try to do anything more complicated, you will run into the limitations of these pre-built meta rigs. And when people do run into these limitations, they sometimes try to extend the capabilities of these rigs by either combining parts of the existing meta rigs or copying and pasting uh, parts. And I call this uh, approach Frankenstein meta rigs. And I'm not very fond of it. I don't recommend it. The one upside of this workflow is that it does give you extended possibilities. You can do more with your rigs, possibly. But there are still some limitations to what you can do. And the biggest problem with this workflow is that you may get errors. You will get errors. And because you don't understand how Rigify works, you won't know how to fix them. So I really want people to use the advanced workflow, which is what this course is about. To use the advanced workflow, you need to understand how Rigify works. And then you get almost unlimited possibilities. You can build almost any rig. Since Rigify needs things to be set up in a certain way, you may still get some errors, but you will know what to do about them. 
there are still some limitations. Currently, Rigify does not include any presets that help you with mechanical rigging. So if you need to rig a piston or caterpillar tracks, then you are on your own. Rigify does things in, in its own way, so if you're really OCD, you may not like this way, so Rigify may not be for you. And finally, if you have a pre-existing uh, pipeline, then Rigify may not fit into it. Rigify is already used in serious pipelines. I'm just saying that if your pre-existing pipeline has really strict rules, then uh, there may, may be some problems integrating Rigify into it. So the only downside of using the advanced workflow of Rigify is that it is not very intuitive to do. When you activate Rigify, parts of it are over here in the armature tab, uh, some are kind of hidden inside the bone tab, some appear over here in the end panel, and if you don't know what you're looking for, then it may be hard to find all of the features of Rigify or how they work. But this is what this course is about. We're going to learn how to use Rigify properly and it's going to be quick and easy. Let's run through the rest of these steps quickly. Once you have a meta rig, you want to make sure that it is well aligned to your character. We're going to do this step properly in the next chapter. Here I'm just demonstrating really quickly. This alignment is not perfect, but let's say for the sake of this presentation that it is good. So the only thing to keep in mind is that you want to do this step in edit mode. The next step is an optional step, and that is to set up bone groups and layers. There will be a special chapter uh, dedicated to this topic, but this step is meant to make your uh, final rig more user-friendly. The next step in this process is really simple, but really important. Rigify gives you this Generate Rig button. When you click it, if everything is set up correctly, then magic will happen and Rigify will produce a highly usable rig that you can use with your characters. And so since I used the pre-built meta rig, my rig will generate without any problems. There is a chance that uh, things may not be set up correctly, so in that case you may have to go uh, back to your meta rig, tweak it, and then try to press generate rig again. In this case, my rig generated without problems, so the next step is to test your rig. For testing purposes, it's best to just parent your character to your generated rig with automatic weights. That gives you decent weight painting very quickly, and you can experiment with your rig and see if it works well. So the next step in this process is to ask yourself, does my rig behave the way I expect it to do? And if it does, then you're basically done, and you can go to another step, which is outside of this uh, Rigify workflow, and that is finishing your weight painting and then posing and animating your character. But there is a chance that you won't be happy with the behavior of the rig, in which case you can go back to your meta rig, tweak it, add more building blocks to it, and then you can regenerate your rig. And that is a very powerful and very unique feature of Rigify. I don't think it's uh, available in any other uh, rigging system or uh, any other 3D package. We are going to be using this feature very often in this course. And so you may have to edit your meta rig a couple of times and regenerate a couple of times, but eventually you will be happy with your rig and then your work with Rigify is finished and you can go to the final weight painting, posing, animation, and so on. Thanks for watching. The next chapter will be available soon or it may already be uploaded. Details will be in the video description.
or just go to cgdive.com slash rigify where you'll find the latest chapters, additional resources and information about advanced lessons that I'm working on. If you want to support me, click like and subscribe.